Why is Chris not in Delta Run? And who the fuck is Chris? Period. To find out why Chris isn't in Dota Run, we first have to go way back when it started. That's right, kids. Undertale. Next, we have to split up the free roots into free timelines. Mercy represents pacifist, Fight represents Junicile, and both of them represent Neutral Run. Now that we did that, let's get back to Chris. Who is Chris, and why does she look so much like Frisk and Cheryl? I also want to know why is no one talking about frisk success in this in delta run like no one mentions frisk like as if she was non-existent and she never existed weird part is is that chris and frisk both are being taken care of by Toro, and of course all the characters from the other game are still here so how can this be? How does no one remember Frisk? Now, I do not believe that Frisk and Chris and Cheryl are three separate people eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. So as you can see from this uh, diagram I made right here, um, they look really familiar. And I'm not explaining the diagram because I am too lazy to. So does this mean that Chris is a fusion of... Cheryl and Friss. Now I know what you guys are thinking. That sounds mad weird. It makes sense. Okay, but it depends on what timeline you're on. And I'm gonna talk about the pacifist timeline first. So if you decided to go on the pacifist route, you are playing as Friss in Dola Run. But if you said the, but if you did the genocidal route, you are playing as Ch Charles in Dolaran. And if you did the neutral route, you're a fusion of Charl and Frisk. Now I know what you guys are thinking, that still doesn't explain why nobody remembers Frisk or Charl. I'll get onto that just in a second. So, in the past it's this timeline. Now, there must have been a memory potion in this timeline. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Undertale never said anything about a memory potion. Well, if it does exist, then that's the reason why everyone forgot it. Now, who came up with that idea? Tor. Why? To make sure that Chris has a wonderful childhood and she can forget all of her trauma. And how did everyone drink the memory potion? Well, you know how Sans said in the past that he always wanted to open up a shop? Well, maybe Toril made a deal with Sans that if he sold memory potions to everyone, he would get a prize in return. Then, like, Sans would sell everyone the memory potion, and then, I don't know, Toril forces him to drink it or something like that, and then everyone forgets what happened to Frisk, and of course, Frisk drinks it as well. So, or Frisk was the only one who drank the memory potion, and Toro decided to make a, a deal with everyone, a, or, or promise, to never say or mention anything that of Frisk saving the world or something like that, so Frisk doesn't remember her trauma. And Toro renamed Frisk just in case anybody tries to spoil it so they can think she's someone else. Now let's talk about the genocide timeline. In the genocide route, you kill everyone and Chero becomes a part of you. But that still wouldn't explain why in Dora Run everyone is alive. Now there's only one logical explanation to this. It was all a dream. Susie never existed. Raziel never existed. And Sans never befriended Toro last night. Like I said before, if you are on the genocidal timeline, you're playing as Charles in Jolaran. But why would Cheryl have a dream with all the people that she killed being happy and going into this card game, board game dimension, 
where she saves everyone from the evil king? Well, there's one simple answer to this, to make her feel guilty. So, in this dream, she realizes that everyone couldn't have gotten her their happy endings if she never killed anyone. The neutral timeline was a really tricky timeline to figure out. Like I said before, if you were on the neutral run, you're playing as a Frisk and Charles fusion in Dulteron. But the only problem is that there was this one question that was blocking my head. Who made an effusion of Frisk and Cheryl? Now, in order to figure this out, I had to pick one main character that didn't have a boss fight. Apollos. Oh, come on. Wasn't it, like, already obvious? She's the only scientist nerdy girl in this whole entire game. But now there's another question blocking my head. Why? Before we figure out that, we need to figure out why, how did Frisk release Cheryl in the neutral one? Now, probably what happened was, since in neutral one, you get to decide who to kill, Cheryl decided to, to appear and then like convince you to kill more people. And then what probably happened was that Atlas probably overheard their conversation and then probably Apollos goes to her lab to see if she has like a cure for Cheryl's weird killing possession. And... But since Cheryl doesn't want Apollos to ruin her plans, she started looking around her lab for a potion that would make them more powerful. But instead, Cheryl fails and makes an effusion of Frisk and herself, which is Chris. 